Hey everyone. So there's been shit going on for weeks concerning these Trump rallies, and not just weeks, you know, months, but there's just been more things happening in the news concerning Donald Trump and his, and what I really should say, Donald Trump and his racist supporters, because let's be honest. Everybody knows that his rallies, they're a clan fest. They are a clan get-together. I mean, the only difference is they're not wearing white sheets, but you already know what they're on. You know their mindset. You know that they lean to the right. I mean, whenever you hear people say, I'm going to make this country great again, I'm going to take the country back, take it back where? Because if you want to get technical... You guys aren't native to this country. One of my favorite YouTubers actually said we are a land of slaves, thieves, and opportunists. And I agree with him. We are. We really, really are. And a lot of people like to skate over that fact. No, let me rephrase that. A lot of racist people like to skate over that fact. Oh, I'm pure American. No. You guys don't want to hear the hard truth. Black people have been in this country longer than some of you, and yet you have the nerve to question who's more patriotic or who is more loyal to the country. And in reality, we haven't gotten reparations or anything, so all these other groups that claim to be so aggrieved and shit, no, you're not. Nobody has had it worse than black people believe that. And what I'm about to show you in this video, it will show you how Donald Trump is really, I mean, this isn't really what he's intending to do. He's intending to send all the people of color out of this country. Don't be surprised if that's his agenda because the way he's talking, talking about Hispanics, Muslims, and we already know he hates blacks. That's no secret. Remember what he used to say? Well, no, not used to, but remember when he used to be like, the blacks, the blacks, the blacks. Then he graduated to the Hispanics and then the Muslims. And that should tell those of you that identify as Hispanic, Muslim, Asian, any other group other than black or white, Donald Trump doesn't like you. He's never liked you guys. Ever. And it's obvious. I mean, and when I see certain people in the media endorsing him, I want to come through the computer screen and shake them, especially if I see black people doing it. And let me just say there aren't like a, a huge number of blacks supporting him, thank God. But the ones in the media that I see doing this shit, it makes you want to do a double take. Like, what? Am I in the twilight zone? Or are you fucking kidding me? Like, I don't know if you guys heard, but civil rights activist Medgar Evers, his brother endorsed Donald Trump. Yeah. My mouth hit the floor when I heard that, but then I thought about it and I was like, well, he is old. And I know some old people in the black community will get mad at me for saying this, but some old black people, they tend to be coons because they've had to live in a society. Because think about it. A lot of them grew up in maybe the 20s, the 30s, back when, you know, racism was blatant. And, you know, it's still blatant today, but today they've gotten even smarter. They've gotten slick with it. Whereas our grandparents, our parents, it was a different type of racism. Hell, some would even argue that today it's even worse because people could smile on your face one minute, then behind closed doors they could say, I can't stand that nigger. And it's obvious. But 
this whole mess with Donald Trump running, if you're a black person, this should scare the hell out of you. And I'm not just saying this for shock value. I mean, if this man gets in power, I mean, you thought George Bush was bad. You thought the idea of Mitt Romney was bad. No, Trump is worse. I mean, read this. Black protesters sucker punched in latest violent incident at Trump event. A screenshot from cell phone video of the man in the pink shirt and cowboy hat punching a protester. Below, a running list of violent incidents involving Trump supporters, protesters, members of the media, and campaign slash security staff at Trump events. Now, what a lot of these people who blindly follow Donald Trump don't realize, especially for those people who are white, who are voting for this man, Donald Trump doesn't give a fuck about you guys either. I mean, you guys are so stupid to think that this rich man, because he is filthy damn rich, he's in pretty much the 1%, you really think he cares about middle class people regardless of what race they are? He doesn't care about you guys. He's pandering to you guys because he's playing on you guys' racism. That's what he's playing on. And a lot of you are too stupid to realize that. And Donald Trump is an evil, evil genius because he's going to tell a bunch of people who are ignorant, misguided, uneducated, a lot of them, uninformed, that, okay, your, enemy are pe your enemies are people of color. Be mad at them. When in reality, the enemies are really people that look just like them. Oh, they would go nuts if they really thought about it. I mean... And there was an image that surfaced, I think, a week or so ago, where Donald Trump had them swear allegiance to him. Now, that honestly says where we are going as a country, and not in a good way. Because a lot of people were saying, wait a minute, that looks frightening and familiar. It looks like Hitler. It reminds us of the Holocaust. Because think about it. Hitler said he would make Germany great again. Donald Trump says he's going to make America great again. Hitler says the Jews are the reasons for unemployment. Donald Trump said that blacks and other people of color, well, so-called people of color, that they're the problem. And a lot of these sheeple are buying into it. And we are that weak-minded as a country. And what Donald Trump is doing, he's pandering to racist white supremacists. He's pandering to those who have a deep-seated hatred. And I guarantee you, a lot of these people that go to these Trump rallies, nine times out of ten, I am willing to bet that they have never really lived around a black person in their entire life. And if they ever did, it was far and few between. I bet money. But yet, they hate us so much, and they don't know why. And I bet if I were to sit down with one of them and say, why do you hate us so much? Come on, say it. You hate us. Give me a reason. I guarantee you, they don't even know. A lot of what it is, they were raised to be racist. They grew up hearing racist things in the household because, don't get it twisted, a baby is not born racist. A baby sees no color. A child sees no color until the parents poison them. Trust me, it's obvious. And you can even look at children in today's society and you can kind of, you can tell sort of that their parents have been telling them shit about people of color. 
I get it all the time, especially when I'm at work. And the parents try so hard to hide it. You know, they'll be all friendly and stuff. But meanwhile, their child is looking at me like I'm an alien. And I'm like, hmm. In my head, I'm going, what are you teaching your kid, huh? What are you telling them about black people? I want to know. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, if this man gets elected, we are in trouble. March 9th, 2016, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, a black protester being escorted out of a Trump rally was sucker punched by a white bystander. I'll show you guys the video. Hopefully it plays. Whoa, okay, rewind. Now, and I'm going to rewind it one more time. Pick up on something. See? That guy in the damn cowboy hat. I guarantee you, if it had just been on a busy street, he wouldn't have punched that guy. You know why? He wouldn't have had police protection. It's funny. A certain group of people get bold when they got people around them to protect them. Because I guarantee you, out in public, he wouldn't have done it. He would have just cowered. Like a little bitch that he is. And I don't know if the video of him talking is up here, but the guy who punched him, he even said openly, oh, I would have killed him. I mean, he can make a verbal threat, but let one of us do it. We'll be under the jail, even though we're not the ones that instigate it. I mean, that tells you the mindset of this country. Though the individual who was attacked was then taken to the ground by law enforcement officials, the man who threw the punch does not appear to have been detained. No, he wasn't detained at all. March 8, 2016, in Jupiter, Florida, Politico reports that Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski forcibly grabbed a female reporter for the right-wing Breitbart news site nearly bringing her down to the ground when she attempted to ask a question after a Trump press conference. See what I mean? They don't want anybody questioning their trusty leader, Donald Trump. Oh no, they're scared of what he might say, what, you're afraid he might be evasive, or even better, he might tell the truth. March 1st, 2016, in Louisville, Kentucky, a black woman was surrounded and shoved by a number of individuals at a Trump rally. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this video, but for the sake of the, my own video, I'll play it. Okay, and keep in mind... This is a young girl, okay? These are grown men pushing her, touching her, assaulting her. And I have one question. Where are all the feminist groups at, huh? Where are all the women's groups, huh? I thought it was bad for a man to put their hands on a woman, right? But, oh yeah, you guys were only talking about white women. You weren't talking about us. You could give two fucks about us, right? But then again, 
I already knew that. That's why whenever I see black women who are in support of feminism, I shake my head because feminism was not meant for us. Feminism is what screwed a lot of us over. It manipulated a lot of black women into thinking that, oh yeah, you know, just because, you know, me and this white woman, we're both women, we can bond. No, your experiences are totally different. Now, don't get me wrong. Biologically, women experience the same shit. But when it comes down to ethnicity, race, stuff like that, no. White women do not have these same struggles as black women. I'm, I'm just putting that out there because I'm not saying white women don't have struggles, but the struggles compared to that of a black woman, no way. A lot of you couldn't even handle having the same struggle as a black woman, honestly. I guarantee you, if you had to have even like a tidbit of the struggle we have, you would have committed suicide by now. Trust me. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to take it. <laughs> See, Trump is manipulating his supporters and he's a presidential candidate telling people, yeah, get them out, get them out of here, get them out. And these stupid ass people, they really think that Trump gives a damn about them. See, Trump is smart. He's not going to physically remove them no he's gonna get you guys to do it because he knows that you know he's a celebrity and a lot of you like him because you bought into his personality oh that's just donald being donald yeah no it's him being a racist And look at that old, look at that old ass man following her, looking like a neo-Nazi. Look at him following her. Touching her. Shit. Okay. February 29th, 2016 in Radford, Virginia. A photographer was slammed to the ground by a Secret Service agent after cursing toward the agent during a dispute over whether the photographer was allowed to work from during a Trump rally. The Secret Service says the incident is being investigated. Let's check out this video. An altercation between Time Magazine photographer Chris Morris and a Secret Service officer turned violent during a Trump rally on Monday. After this heated discussion, Morris was grabbed by the neck and taken down by the security officer. Oh my god! I'm sorry, but, but watch, watch, look at that! Another angle shows how the altercation played out once Morris was on the ground. After Morris got up, he was escorted from the event. December 14th, 2015, in Las Vegas, individuals at a Trump rally yelled, Sigh hell, and light the motherfucker on fire toward a black protester who was being physically removed by security staffers. Now, before I show this video, I'm going to show you all what that means. Sigh. Oops, I spelled it wrong. 
Hail My Leader. See? It was adopted in the 1930s by the Nazi party to signal obedience to the party's leader, Adolf Hitler, and to glorify the German nation and later the German war effort. Now see, a lot of people are going to think I'm just blowing smoke about this, but telling you, Donald Trump is another Adolf Hitler. And what a lot of people don't know about Trump, his daddy was a KKK member. Ooh, shocker. I'm not surprised. I mean, he learned from the best. If you think about it. Now I'll show you guys the video of this. Real quick. <laughs> Yeah, you heard that? In case you didn't, rewind. Yeah, you listen to tone. All that hatred. Telling you, it's not looking good. <laughs> December 11th, 2015, in New York City, protesters affiliated with various Arab American and Muslim American groups per the AP were forcibly ejected from a fundraiser at which Trump was speaking. And here's the video. December 3rd, 2015, in New York City, a security guard took a sign from and struck an immigration activist during a protest after a Donald Trump event. November 21st, 2015, in Birmingham, Alabama, a black protester at a Trump rally was punched, kicked, and according to the Washington Post, briefly choked. Here's the video. Oh, hell no. No. In my opinion, that's worse than hitting somebody. Spitting on somebody? That's one of the most disgusting things you can do. I mean, just... Let me rewind this shit. I'm angry. Trump later defended the crowd's treatment of the protester, saying that maybe he should have been roughed up because it was absolutely disgusting what he was doing. No, Trump. It was disgusting when one of your protesters spit in his face. It was disgusting when you got on camera and openly said that anybody who attacks the protesters, you'll pay for their legal fees. That was disgusting. October 23rd, 2015, in Miami. A man at a Trump rally knocked down and kicked a Latino protester. Now see, Latino... This should be proof enough that they don't like you. But I know a lot of you won't listen, so I digress. 
October 14, 2015, in Richmond, Virginia. Individuals at a Trump rally shoved and took signs from a group of immigration activists. One spit in a protester's face. Oh my God. Okay. And I will say that Chicago really showed him. Donald Trump really thought that he was going to get to come into Chicago and handle all that mess like he did in those other cities. No. Chicago? No. And what Donald Trump doesn't understand, a lot of black people in this country, we're not operating the way that our grandparents and our parents have operated. We're not on that whole sit in, turn the other cheek shit. No. If somebody attacks us, we will defend ourselves. Let me refresh the page real quick. With thousands of people already packed into stands and music blaring to warm up the crowd, Donald J. Trump's campaign abruptly canceled his rally here on Friday night over security concerns as protesters clashed with his supporters inside an arena where he was to speak. Minutes after Mr. Trump was to have taken to a podium on the campus of a large, diverse public university just west of downtown, an announcer suddenly pronounced the event over before it had begun. Hundreds of protesters who had promised to be a visible presence here and filled several sections of the area let out in an, an elated, unstopping cheer. Mr. Trump supporters, many of whom had waited hours to see the Republican frontrunner, seemed stunned and slowly filed out in anger. Around the country, protesters have interrupted virtually every Trump rally, but his planned appearance here in the city run for decades by Democrats and populated by nearly equal thirds of blacks, Latinos, and whites had drawn some particularly in incensed responses since it was announced days ago. The canceled rally came on a day that Mr. Trump sought to move past the primary fight, saying that the party needed to come together behind him. Elsewhere, Mr. Trump's security has tried to identify and exclude potential demonstrators before they enter his events, but large groups of protesters have waited in line for seats here and engaged in tense disputes with Trump supporters, even as the University of Illinois at Chicago Pavilion was still filing up. For more than an hour before the event was to begin, security teams led protesters out one by one, but many more remained, sparring with Trump supporters. See, look at how they word shit, that we're sparring with them. Uh, no. Nine times out of ten, I guarantee you, those Trump supporters probably said or did something nasty to them, and they reacted. In the statement, Mr. Trump's campaign said that he has determined that for the safety of all of the tens of thousands of people that have gathered in and around the area, tonight's rally will be postponed to another date. Thank you very much for your attendance and please go in peace, the statement said. On MSNBC, Mr. Trump said that after meeting with the law enforcement authorities,
I felt that it was just safer. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Asked about the images of people clashing at the rally, Mr. Trump said, Honestly, we have a very divided country. Yeah, no shit, dude, because of people like you. Mr. Trump's opponent, Senator Marco Rubio, Rubio, well, <laughs> Rubio, Senator Ted Cruz, and Governor John Kasich, condemned the disruptions, but said Mr. Trump was responsible for the tenor of his rallies. Mr. Cruz said Mr. Trump affirmatively encourages violence. For hours, the Chicago police, along with university officers, the federal authorities, and others that were out here in force. A Chicago police spokeswoman said that city law enforcement authorities were not consulted and had no role in canceling the event. The spokesman said there had been five arrests, two by the Chicago police, two by the university's police, and one by the Illinois State Police. The fire department said three people, including a police officer, were injured. The prospect of a Trump rally here had long been fraught with apprehension. This city has been in turmoil over questions of race and policing for months. The release in November of a video of the fatal shooting of Laquan McDonald, a black teenager by a white Chicago police officer, had set off weeks of protest. The University of Illinois at Chicago draws a significant share of students from Chicago's neighborhoods and has a large number of international students and planned protests were publicized on social media. Around 10,000 people had signed up on Facebook to take part in one anti-Trump march. Scores of faculty members had pleaded with administrators over allowing the rally in a letter, which read in part, We also request that the university publicly distance itself from the event and make a statement that the Trump rally is an anathema to the mission of UIC. In the hours before the event, inside the 9,500-seat arena, Mr. Trump's backers were energized. Some dressed in outfits to match his and chanted, Trump, 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 as they waited. But the situation grew tense as the size of the protest crowd became clear, and as some yelled anti-Trump slogans and skirmished with the supporters, three men in t-shirts that read, Muslims Unite Against Trump, departed early on, delighting the pro-Trump crowd. Outside, a tent standoff mounted as well. A line stretched for blocks while ticket holders, a diverse mix of older whites wearing Trump gear and younger African-American and Muslim students, waited to be allowed inside. Some said they were devoted Trump fans eager to hear him speak in person. I believe in Trump, absolutely, said Jenna Hayek, a Chicagoan and stay-at-home mother, holding the hand of her 12-year-old son, Peter. I definitely agree with his immigration policy. It's important to control who comes into this country. Oh, my God. And you read it right. She has a son. A large group opposing Mr. Trump merely taunted the people entering the stadium with shouts of Donald Trump has got to go and signs caricaturing Mr. Trump as a fascist with the Hitler mustache. In one only in Chicago insult, a protester carried a sign reading, Trump puts ketchup on his hot dog. And then suddenly an announcement declared the event over and repeated it several times. As people streamed out, supporters of Mr. Trump were angry and frustrated. Anthony Peroni, 19, a student at the university and a Republican, said he was disappointed. I understand why people didn't want him to come here, he said. People were fighting, ripping up signs, going crazy. It was just a terrible idea. But protesters were jubilant and celebrated along the intersections on the city's near west side. Some protesters shut down lanes of a nearby expressway. Arguments and small skirmishes broke out along the streets. At one point, the police rushed in, separating people. At least one man was hit on the head with a police baton, and blood could be seen coming from a gash on his face. A woman also bloodied was led away by police. They got the job done, Vicki DeAnda, 54, an accountant from Chicago, said of the demonstrators. Someone has to object to this hatred. The people inside have a right to be there, but we have a right to be here too. 
Yeah. I'm telling you, Chicago. Chicago was like, no, not in our city. And I admire them for that. I think what they did was brave. And I think it was needed. You know what I mean? Because we've seen all over the media how Trump rallies, they come to these cities and they cause nothing but violence and destruction. And Chicago was like, look, we're already dealing with our own shit. We're not dealing with Trump too. This is ridiculous. And so to all those who protested at the Trump rally or sort of Trump rally at Chicago, kudos to you guys because you guys made it where he didn't even want to come. Perfect. But yeah, guys, that's all I really wanted to talk about. But for real, seriously, though, any person who votes for this man, you are an idiot. Regardless of gender, race, ethnicity, you are stupid. Because Donald Trump only cares about Donald Trump and other rich folk. He doesn't even care about poor whites. He's making them think he cares about them, which is why he's got them so brainwashed. But yeah, I can't wait to see all the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know why you support Donald Trump or why you don't. What you think his political stance is. All that other stuff. Can't wait to hear it. More videos coming up soon, guys. Have a good night. Hey, everyone. So there's been shit going on for weeks concerning these Trump rallies, and not just weeks, you know, months, but there's just been more things happening in the news concerning Donald Trump and his, and what I really should say, Donald Trump and his racist supporters, because let's be honest, everybody knows that his rallies, they're a Klan fest. They are a clan get-together. I mean, the only difference is they're not wearing white sheets, but you already know what they're on. You know their mindset. You know that they lean to the right. I mean, whenever you hear people say, I'm going to make this country great again, I'm going to take the country back, take it back where? Because if you want to get technical, you guys aren't native to this country. One of my favorite YouTubers actually said, we are a land of slaves, thieves, and opportunists. And I agree with him. We are. We really, really are. And a lot of people like to skate over that fact. No, let me rephrase that. A lot of racist people like to skate over that fact. Oh, I'm pure American. No. You guys don't want to hear the hard truth. Black people have been in this country longer than some of you, and yet you have the nerve to question who's more patriotic or who is more loyal to the country. And in reality, we haven't gotten reparations or anything, so all these other groups that claim to be so egregious and shit, no, you're not. Nobody has had it worse than black people believe that and what I'm about to show you in this video it will show you how Donald Trump is really racism that's what he's playing on and a lot of you are too stupid to realize that and Donald Trump is an evil evil genius because he's gonna tell a bunch of people who are ignorant misguided uneducated, a lot of them, uninformed that, okay, your enemy are pe your enemies are people of color. Be mad at them. When in reality, the enemies are really people that look just like them. Oh, they would go nuts if they really thought about it. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> and there was an image that surfaced a I think a week or so ago, where Donald Trump had them swear allegiance to him. Now that honestly says where we are going as a country, and not in a good way.
Because a lot of people were saying, wait a minute, that looks frightening and familiar. It looks like Hitler. It reminds us of the Holocaust. Because think about it. Hitler said he would make Germany great again. Donald Trump says he's going to make America great again. Hitler says the Jews are the reasons for unemployment. Donald Trump said that blacks and other people of color, well, so-called people of color, that they're the problem. And a lot of these sheeple are buying into it. And we are that weak-minded as a country. And what Donald Trump is doing, he's pandering to racist white supremacists. He's pandering to those who have a deep-seated hatred. And I guarantee you, a lot of these people that go to these Trump rallies nine times out of ten, I mean, this isn't really what he's intending to do. He's intending to send all the people of color out of this country. Don't be surprised if that's his agenda because the way he's talking, talking about Hispanics, Muslims, and we already know he hates blacks. That's no secret. Remember what he used to say? Well, no, not used to, but remember when he used to be like, the blacks, the blacks, the blacks. Then he graduated to the Hispanics and then the Muslims. And that should tell those of you that identify as Hispanic, Muslim, Asian, any other group other than black or white, Donald Trump doesn't like you. He's never liked you guys, ever. And it's obvious, I mean, and when I see certain people in the media endorsing him, I wanna come through the computer screen and shake them, especially if I see black people doing it. And let me just say there aren't like a, a huge number of blacks supporting him, thank God. But the ones in the media that I see doing this shit, it makes you want to do a double take. Like, what? Am I in the twilight zone? Are, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I don't know if you guys heard, but civil rights activist Medgar Evers, his brother endorsed Donald Trump. Yeah. My mouth hit the floor when I heard that, but then I thought about it and I was like, well, he is old. And I know some old people in the black community will get mad at me for saying this, but some old black people, they tend to be coons because they've had to live in a society. Because think about it. A lot of them grew up in maybe the 20s, the 30s, back when, you know, racism was blatant. And, you know, it's still blatant today, but today they've gotten even smarter. They've gotten slick with it. Whereas our grandparents, our parents, it was a different type of racism. Hell, some would even argue that today it's even worse because people could smile on your face one minute, then behind closed doors they could say, I can't stand that nigger. And it's obvious. But this whole mess with Donald Trump running, if you're a black person, this should scare the hell out of you. And I'm not just saying this for shock value. I mean, if this man gets in power, whew, I mean, you thought George Bush was bad. You thought the idea of Mitt Romney was bad. No, Trump is worse. I mean, read this. Black protesters sucker punched in latest violent incident at Trump event. A screenshot from cell phone video of the man in the pink shirt and cowboy hat punching a protester. Below. 
a running list of violent incidents involving Trump supporters, protesters, members of the media, and campaign slash security staff at Trump events. Now, what a lot of these people who blindly follow Donald Trump don't realize, especially for those people who are white, who are voting for this man, Donald Trump doesn't give a fuck about you guys either. I mean, you guys are so stupid to think that this rich man, because he is filthy damn rich, he's in pretty much the 1%, you really think he cares about middle class people regardless of what race they are? He doesn't care about you guys. He's pandering to you guys because he's playing on you guys. I am willing to bet that they have never really lived around a black person in their entire life. And if they ever did, it was far and few between. I bet money. But yet, they hate us so much, and they don't know why. And I bet if I were to sit down with one of them and say, why do you hate us so much? Come on, say it. You hate us. Give me a reason. I guarantee you, they don't even know. A lot of what it is, they were raised to be racist. They grew up hearing racist things in the household because, don't get it twisted, a baby is not born racist. A baby sees no color. A child sees no color until the parents poison them. Trust me, it's obvious. And you can even look at children in today's society and you can kind of, you can tell sort of. that their parents have been telling them shit about people of color. I get it all the time, especially when I'm at work. And the parents try so hard to hide it. You know, they'll be all friendly and stuff. But meanwhile, their child is looking at me like I'm an alien. And I'm like, hmm. In my head, I'm going, what are you teaching your kid, huh? What are you telling them about black people? I want to know. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, if this man gets elected, we are in trouble. March 9th, 2016 in Fayetteville, North Carolina, a black protester being escorted out of a Trump rally was sucker punched by a white bystander. I'll show you guys the video. Hopefully it plays.